Pink Hey Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or for some of you, welcome to my channel. I've been doing 7 Nights content since 3 years ago, and we finally have 7 Nights 2. So honestly, I didn't play the 7 Nights 2 Korean version, so everything is pretty new to me, but I have done extensive research. So I think this video is gonna be a pretty good representation about the most useful heroes that you can get, and you should have, when you start off the game. As we move from 7 Nights 1 to 7 Nights 2, one thing that remains constant, and that is my use for the amazing Android emulator LD Player. So thank you LD Player for supporting the channel's very first sponsorship. LD Player is a free Android emulator to play mobile games on PC with your mouse and keyboard and that means freeing up your phone to do other things while letting your game grind away for all the resources you will need. It provides the fastest performance for Android gaming, supports various Windows systems and has a game library of over 1 million games. And more importantly, LD Player doesn't use much of your PC's resources too, allowing you to multitask while leaving your game to run. They constantly update the emulator as well to provide a better experience for all users. And if you are concerned about the smoothness of gameplay, I mean, look at this. Seven Nights 2 looks absolutely gorgeous on LD Player, allowing you to enjoy this beautiful game on a much larger screen. I have been using LD Player for all my videos and streams over the past year, and I'm sure you can tell I've had a great experience with it to use it this long. So download LD Player using the affiliate link in the description and start your journey in 7 Nights 2 without any more delay. So first thing you need to know is that there are 5 types of heroes in 7 Nights 2. The DPS, the tank, the universal type, the range type and the support type. The DPS units have close range damage and have higher HP and defense than the range type. The range type actually deals with long range damage of course and they are pretty much glass cannons as well. The tanks have very high HP and defense and most of them do have shields and taunts. Okay? For the support heroes, they are mainly the healers of your team and they have pretty low stats. Whereas for the universal heroes, they have average stats and they can be classified themselves into attack type, defense type and also support type depending on their skill set so they are pretty flexible. There are also six tiers of rarities for the heroes. I'm not too sure you know at this point what the global version is going to call the tiers but based on what I've translated from the Korea side it is the normal, the advanced, the rare, the rare plus, the legendary and the legendary plus. Okay so without further ado we are going to head right in to check out what are the best heroes in the normal tier. For the normal tier or general tier, we actually have Len. Okay, she is your default character and she's a universal type. So the good thing about Len is that she's actually really good in raid. She has a suppression assault effect that deals additional damage to the boss. And based on what I've read about suppression, you can actually disable certain moves on the boss and that will give you a huge advantage over them. Len also increases all allies attack stat and she also is able to electrify the enemies. So she's actually one of the better heroes given to you for free of course and she's gonna be very useful in the first raid which is the Gigantus raid but, but her suppression effect will definitely play a very strong part in you clinching the win and basically that's all for the normal tier <laughs> okay so we're moving on to the advanced tier in the advanced tier these five heroes which I'll be talking about they actually give you status effect resistances the first hero I will talk about is Gilahan and for Gilahan it is actually the burn status so he is going to be really useful in the Gigantus raid as well and you get him for free when your account CP is 20,000 which is not going to be too difficult I believe. Okay so they have prepped you really well to deal with the first raid so I don't think there will be a big issue there. So Gilahan himself he not only gives burn resistance he also heals himself pretty well so he can be a tank unit placed on the front. Okay he also has a defense ignoring ultimate move. Likewise we have Scott. Scott is actually used in the raid later on which is the Nestra incarnation raid. Not too soon okay but he does give increased resistance against bleed which is pretty good because the Nestra incarnation is gonna deal bleed to you and he's not gonna be gotten for free so you have to get him via gacha but beyond that he is actually able to heal allies as well and he's able to give himself a shield which you know is probably needed since you will want him around for the bleed resistance. Another resistance hero that you will be getting for free is 
Edo. Edo is the one that provides resistance against freezing and is going to be very useful against the avalanche rate. He's also gotten for free once your account CP has hit 60,000. Now not only that, Edo is a tank himself and he will reduce the damage that your allies take and also increase his own guard rate which I think will be block rate and also has a chance to provoke the enemy such that you know he will cast taunt on himself. So it's a pretty useful unit I would say for a low tier character and probably a must have for the raid. Next up we have Henry, also another status resistance provider and he will boost your resistance against paralysis which is going to be really handy in the Baron raid. Okay, He is also gotten from Gacha, not going to be given for free. Another hero and the last hero in the advanced tier will be Ian. If you play Seven Knights 1, he is the rumored child of Klamath. <laughs> Klamath is actually seeking for her son, okay, and apparently her son ended up in Seven Knights 2. So Ian actually gives you poison resistance. And not only that, as a support unit, he's gonna heal all allies for 8 seconds with his ultimate. He also heals on his regular skills. Not only that, he will also reduce the damage that the enemy does. And he's good for the Queen Residia raid. So after this, we are going to go into the rare tier. There's gonna be a lot of heroes in the rare tier and these are the heroes that I think you will be using the most and they will probably also have a very long lasting effect for some of them of course. So for all the rare heroes, you will actually be getting a selector after you complete the infinite tower floor 1 and I think depending on who you have not put for, you can make the choice based on whatever I have recommended here. Okay, So one of them is Shane and if you know from 7 Nights 1, Shane is the best physical DPS in 7 Nights 1 until some other hero took over. So for Shane, she is going to be a very important unit for you when you start off 7 Nights 2 as well. She is one of the strongest single target damage dealers until you get better ones later on of course. Okay, She also has a suppression effect so as I said suppression effects are very important against the raid bosses because they can actually seal off and disable certain moves of the boss and also allows um, the DPS to do extra damage to the boss. So that's going to be really good on the avalanche raid, I believe. And for Shane herself, you know, she is actually able to teleport to the target and do very heavy damage and also have a chance to stun the enemy as well. Uh, she also has an area effect damage and the damage will be distributed by the number of hit targets within that area which means if you have more enemies within that circumference the damage dealt to each enemy will be lower. So you can imagine if there's only a single boss there this skill will hit pretty hard. And she's also free once your account hits 170,000 CP. The next hero is Shay. Shay is a support unit and from what I have seen, uh, there are some mixed reviews about her. Okay, some people think that she's super amazing. Some websites even give her like S tier. Some players do feel that she is not as great as she is. I, I mean, uh, that's kind of a mixed reviews. But most of the reviews are positive, which means they give her a very high rating, okay? Why is Shay so good? Because her ultimate actually increases all your allies ultimate gauge which is going to allow you to charge and run skills even faster and not only that she will also be able to reduce the enemy's ultimate gauge and increase her own in turn. She also heals and reduces damage that your allies take and she's going to be really useful in your story runs, your raids, in fact any raid where you need a healer I think Shay is going to kick in. She's also going to be good in your infinite tower and uh, field exploration if you need to farm. The next hero is the universal hero and that is Rudy. This Rudy is you know, a little different from the Rudy that we know. This Rudy is going to be a little older than the one that we will see later on. So for this Rudy, he will also have a suppression effect which makes him really good in the Baryon raid. Okay, he is also a taunter and he will give all allies shields. So that means he will be protecting your entire team from a lot of damage. He's also free, which means you will get him when your account CP is 114. So you don't have to worry about not having him. And I think being a rare hero, you know, I'm not too sure about the gacha rates for Seven Nights 2, but I believe from what I heard, um, eventually you will get most of the characters. So I don't think you need to worry about, you know, re-rolling for any of them, especially when a few of them are given to you for free. As you progress with your account. 
Another pretty useful hero who has also gotten some mixed reviews is Serena. Okay, so based on the website I've seen, Serena was rated very highly, but some players think that she's just so so. <laughs> okay, uh, but from what I've read from her skill set, I think she could be of really good use because her ultimate actually reduces your skill cooldown, which means your allies are going to be allowed to use their skills much more, and she also increases your range skill damage on all allies. Okay, which means uh, if you pair her up with certain ranged heroes, which we'll talk about later on, I think you can make a pretty good team. And more importantly, every time she uses a skill, she will heal your entire team. Right, so that is also gonna be very in line with her ultimate which reduces cooldown So she will probably be healing your team a lot Which makes me feel that she's gonna be really good in farming because you know uh, in few exploration You will just send off your heroes to fight various mobs of enemies So when they are going through all these mobs, you know Serena will keep your team alive and your ranged heroes Whoever you may use is gonna do a lot more damage as well at the same time which could make your farming go really really fast Okay, and that's one particular hero we'll talk about, and that is in the rare plus. Okay, moving on to range heroes in the rare tier, we have Juju. Juju is gonna be a sub par DPS compared to Shane for sure, but for a range hero, she is probably the best in the rare tier. She actually specializes in paralyzing enemies. Like out of her three skills, there are two that paralyzes, and for her passive, she actually increases her own damage dealt to paralyzed enemies. She also has a hundred percent chance to reduce enemy defense, which means you know this serves her purpose as a damage dealer as well. So Juju is pretty neat, I would say, and you can also use her in the initial raids, um, or story and field exploration as well. Then we have Neo. Neo is also someone that has gotten some mixed reviews uh, but I think over time I think Neo won't be that great of a hero okay however in the beginning he will be decent for you he's actually someone that is able to do a lot of AOE damage because his basic attacks actually do range damage and he also increases your allies defense ignoring efficiency which makes your, all your allies hit a little harder I think he will be a good you know support range kind of hero and uh, potentially also a pretty neat damage dealer but beyond that he probably won't have that much of a use you could use him in pvp for sure in the early stages until more powerful heroes come out then we come to the tanks which i think are very important heroes because from the videos i've seen uh, they tend to emphasize the role of the tank uh, whereby the tank has to be a very good one to take a lot of damage especially when you're just starting out and you don't have very awesome gear you know so for tanks iota is actually one of the better tanks she also has a suppression effect which means you can use her in the raid and one of the recommended raids that you she can be used is the queen residual raid she does taunt and also help to reduce the enemy attack and she also increases her own defense so in that case she serves her purpose as a tank because she also heals her health based on her own defense stat so when put together i think she does serve that purpose of a tank and she's one of the better ones that you can get pretty early as well so the next one is velda velda is actually able to reduce the enemy's attack okay he also gives a link effect to three allies that are close to him and from what i have read a link effect is basically a damage mitigation effect. Basically, whatever damage that is dealt to, I think, them or dealt to Vel Velda, it will be shared. Okay, so this kind of reduces the damage whichever unit is going to take. Okay, and based on the translation I've gotten, there's another skill that he has that allows pulling and binding. So could be the same things okay i think the pulling effect would mean that they, he would pull his allies closer to him and then probably the link effect can take place that could be a thing i don't know okay not only that for his passive he gives silence resist yeah and also reduces the damage they take so pretty useful as well but some reviewers say that he's really good in the raids um while some think he is not okay so something here he's more suited for pvp so we have to see 
uh, what where he goes. I'm not too sure at this point as well. Okay. Moving on to the rare plus heroes. Okay, there are three that I want to talk about. Among I think there are four or five of them, or six. Uh, Len again. Len is gonna be a DPS style unit in the rare plus tier. She also has a suppression effect, so she's gonna be pretty good in the raid as well. And she definitely has better stats than the default Len as well. So I think she's a better replacement for the default Len. And because she is a DPS style unit, she's a DPS type unit. Her stats will be different from the original land, the default land. Not only that, she also gives herself an immunity okay, against the all damage. That means she can survive longer and that is going to be pretty helpful in the raid as well. Now the key hero in the rare is actually Luki. Again, he is someone that has gotten mixed reviews but I've seen pretty good reviews when it comes to farming with him because his ultimate actually gives Hit all your allies increase attack speed and movement speed which is very crucial when you're moving in the fuel exploration okay not only that he will reduce his cooldown by 20 percent as well and he also has two aoe kind of damage which means when he goes into a mob he's likely to clear it very very quickly and not only that he will have a chance to reduce the enemy's movement speed as well and he also has an ability to continuously increase your allies attack rate I don't know the details of this continuous increase, okay? It could have a cap, but it's not stated from the translation that I've been given. So Luki is gonna be a really good farmer. He's actually S tier in fuel exploration. And because Luki is a range hero, remember what I said about Serena previously, whereby she increases range hero damage. So she and Luki are probably gonna be a really good pair for farming, especially if your stats are lower in the beginning. Melissa is another pretty decent rare plus hero from what I've read but her reviews are very mixed as well okay I think she will get a remake sometime later on or we could be getting her remade skill set I'm not too sure but overall she has the ability to heal your allies and cleanse she is also able to give them a shield of up to 14% of their max HP she also has a chance to silence and reduce the enemy's defense not only that for her passive she gives all allies a resistance to crit so as a support unit I think that is amazing and I think that would really help a team especially when you face very difficult enemies so we're gonna talk about the legendary tier heroes right now and these heroes are definitely all pretty good from what I've read there are no legendary hero that is really bad and we're gonna start off the best one she's like SSS tier rated very highly across so many sites and players Karin Okay, our main hero's main character's uh, girlfriend, Karin. She has the ultimate move that revives all allies. It can only be used if an ally is dead. Okay, she also heals and gives allies shields. She has two healing moves. She also has a chance to reduce the attack of the enemy. And more importantly for a passive, she boosts status effect resistance for all your allies. So for Karin, she is an amazing, amazing support unit. And thankfully, what I've heard is that we are getting her on the seventh day on the check-in. So previously in the Korean version, it was actually an Eileen, legendary Eileen. But from what I have heard and received news about we are actually getting a Karin because um, yeah she is just that good for any player even later on as you move into mid game and end game okay so Karin is definitely someone that you really really want to have and if you have Karin then I think of course the lower tier support heroes such as Shay may not be as useful uh, just to keep in mind that the higher tier heroes will tend to outshine the lower tier heroes of course like in any other game but it's still good to have a variety built at the start because these legendary heroes do not come too commonly right being legendary heroes themselves okay then the next one is a range hero yon he if you know from seven nights yon he is definitely one of the most popular heroes in the series uh, for yon he here she is actually able to deal damage over time she also has an aoe basic attack and she has the ability to stun enemies as well so she is extremely good in story um, nestra incarnation rate as a dps in pvp for sure and also in fuel exploration whereby she will just kill the mobs very very quickly for you and of course like karin and all other legendary heroes that we are about to talk about they are only obtained from gacha unless otherwise specified 
The next one is a very amazing support hero, Rachel. In 7 Nights 1, she was known to be the PvE queen until other heroes took over, of course. <laughs> but Rachel being Rachel in 7 Nights 2, she has amazing utility from what I've read. Okay, so not only she has very high chance to burn the enemies, uh, she basically has, you know, all her skills will burn the enemy. Okay, but based on the amount of burn stacks, she will do additional damage to the enemies and then she also on top of that reduces the enemy's block rate increases the damage the enemies take and also reduces the enemy's defense which is what three of her skills will do and they are very low in cooldown as well so rachel is actually one of the top support units despite being a dps unit she is actually one of the top tier support units okay uh, debuffer unit in seven nights two so far Okay, not only that her passive is actually able to increase allies attack rate continuously as well. Something similar to Luki we saw before. Okay, so this definitely makes her very good and a must-have unit. And she's free when your account reaches 280,000 CP. Next up, we also have Dylan's who is also a DPS unit. Dylan's is super strong. His ultimate move does very heavy damage and also ignores defense of the target. Not only that, he will be able to reduce recovery rate of the enemies, silence enemies, and also increase the damage that your allies deal, which makes him also kind of like a support unit, but at the same time, do a lot of damage so he's gonna be very good in all the launch modes okay story infinite tower pvp as well uh, raid fuel exploration so like i said you know if you start off with any of these units i think you are still gonna be fine because they are not bad per se right they all have some usage it's just that you need the variety of units to actually compose a team because if you're having only your dps team without any healers or tankers then you could face some trouble so the more important thing is how you want to make use of the selector to ensure that you have a proper team built in order to tackle the stories and the raids that are about to come next up we have legendary rudy Rudy in this case is going to be a better tank than the rare Rudy for sure and there's also going to be a legendary plus Rudy that will come out in future uh, so he's also going to be a really good tank okay so for this legendary Rudy he will cleanse all debuffs and also give himself a shield he will also give all allies a link and increase their guard rate or block rate um, then he also has the effect which is similar to Rachel which is to increase the allies defense continuously I believe as well so it's definitely gonna be a really good damage absorber for you if you are taking too much damage then throwing in a tank like Rudy here is gonna help you a lot so you may think what about the universal legendary heroes well there are three actually but I've only listed two there are two Eileen's and one spike they are mainly used in PvP, okay, their skill sets are more PvP oriented whereby uh, from what I've read at the beginning of the PvP meta at launch, there was a debuff meta. So Spike is kind of like the freezer, Aline is the one that does electrify. And we also have another legendary hero that has yet to come out and will come out in the first update and that is Claire. She is an archer and I think she has some skills that are mainly focused on debuffs as well. So at launch, the PvP meta for 7 Nights 2 is pretty much focused on debuff characters. So yeah, we, we have to find out what's gonna happen. Now, moving on to the final tier, which is the Legendary Plus tier. The Legendary Plus tier definitely houses one of the strongest heroes in the entire game. Uh, but I'm only going to talk about two because they're actually just four at launch. And two of them are very strong. The other two are pretty much also PvP oriented heroes. So nothing much I can really recommend because for PvP things change, right? Meta changes. But I will just tell you what they do later on. The first hero I need to talk about is Cosette. Cosette is the best DPS damage dealer in the entire game. She is the best uh, character in the game for PvE content. Okay, she hits super hard single target damage. She has her own self increase, continuous increase of attack rate. Okay, she reduces the enemy recovery rate as well. And she also focuses on a target. 
for 20 seconds. Not only that, her normal attacks when dealt to a targeted enemy will deal additional damage. Basically, you know, she just increases damage for herself because she's probably the only one that's going to apply the target effect. And everywhere you go, you will see that she is rated SS tier <laughs> in all the modes. In Infinite Tower, in Story, in Raid. She's definitely the hero that you will want to be using for all your raids in the back line okay, because she deals so much damage. And basically if you have a corset at the start of your game, you are pretty much gonna have a really good time, you know. So I mean, I won't recommend re-rolling, but if you really really want to re-roll, I think she should be the one that you want to get, okay. Next up we have Shane, another Shane, another version of Shane, okay. This Shane is also very strong in terms of damage dealing. She also has a camouflage effect for herself which means I think she cannot be targeted. And she also has a 100% chance to stun and reduce the enemy's recovery as well. On top of that, I think she has buff removal also and she also has a suppression effect making her a really good hero for the raid as well. But more importantly, she's also a free hero that you get much later on, Not definitely not at launch because you're not going to get 1 million, 1.6 million uh, CP right from the start. But later on, you will get her. I don't, I don't think you need to rush to re-roll her if you really want, but uh, she's definitely going to help you in many situations if you do get her as well, okay? So the other two legendary plus heroes are Valda and Ming. Uh, they are both more PvP oriented. And from what I've heard, Ming actually has a buff removal skill. Uh, she also has stun effects. And I think she also reduces the enemy's ultimate gauges with her ultimate move. And every time she does two basic attacks, she will reduce the enemy's ultimate gauge and increase her own ultimate gauge by that same amount that was decreased on the enemy which means she's probably going to be doing a lot of ultimate skill looping okay in that case and uh, just by the sound of that it feels that she is more pvp oriented and her damage multipliers are definitely not as high as Shane and Corset, so uh, definitely not as oriented for pve in the case of Valda, he is also more stun oriented and uh, definitely more PvP oriented. Yeah, <laughs> nothing much there besides these. So yes, so yeah, this was my coverage for the most useful heroes that you can have in Seven Nights Two at the start. And I hope it helped. And if it did, do give it a like and subscribe to my channel because I will try to produce more Seven Nights Two content uh, over time. I'm still going to take some time to learn the game. So I will be you know, playing and learning alongside you guys as well. So if there's anything that you feel that I've said wrongly, do correct me in the comments below because I know that there are so many mixed opinions about things out there. Okay, the internet may not always be right. So feel free to correct me in the comments. And, and of course, always big shout out to my channel members, ZMD Phoenix, Yamaki, Reggie Bautista and Hajime-chan for the support. Stay tuned for more videos, thank you so much and see you!